core members. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to turn it over to you. I'm looking forward to learning lots from you today. Thanks a lot, Stephen. I really appreciate that. And thanks to everyone for joining us today. I've been really enjoying seeing the all the great musical options that I can now add to my playlist coming in in the chat. So thanks for that. Just to share some brief context about how I'm connected to national service, I've directed a few different AmeriCorps programs and VISTA programs. And now I'm an independent trainer and facilitator for national service programs all over the country. I also work with a team of national service colleagues in an organization called FACE Consulting Collaborative, and that stands for Facilitating Awareness and Change for Equity. And we do diversity, equity, and inclusion work uh, for nonprofits and national service programs all around the country. I never served as an AmeriCorps member, but I spent my 20s serving in outdoor and environmental education programs uh, on a living stipend, doing good stuff with great people. So in those ways, I can relate to your experience as members, and I deeply thank you for your service. Um, as Stephen mentioned, I've led many wellness sessions for members um, over the years in person and online, and I'm very happy to be able to join with you today in our exploration. Jeff, thank you so much. Excited to get back to you very soon. Um, we've introduced ourselves now. I just want to look at our agenda here today. Uh, we know that your job as a VISTA has many, many challenges. Our goal for today's webinar is to support your work by giving you some strategies you can use at your project site. And Jeff's got a lot of really practical and good ideas that I really wish I knew when I was serving. Um, so we're going to identify how VISTA service can impact multiple levels of wellness. We know this job uh, impacts you before, during, and after uh, you finish work. How to identify stress and burnout, look at coping strategies to manage stress, identify resources, people, organizations, and content within your VISTA service that'll help you build resilience. And again, set that foundation for a lifetime of service. And we want you to leave with an action plan so that you know your next steps to manage stress in your VISTA service. And I'll, I'll pass it back to Jeff here. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate the background and the setting us up for what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, wellness is an essential part of our VISTA service and really our whole life experience. You know, we all face daily challenges in our work or service positions or in our families and communities, and we can often not control what's happening, but we can control how we take care of ourselves. We can deepen our awareness about stressors and how to respond to challenges effectively. We can only effectively serve others if we take care of ourselves first. An AmeriCorps member I just worked with said it's like needing to put on your own oxygen mask first before assisting others. And while that is a very emergency response example, I think the same principles applies to wellness and service. Today, we'll begin with a conversation about how Vista Service can impact multiple levels of wellness, and then discuss how to identify stress and burnout as we look to ways to support wellness and build our resiliency. Wellness is not a one size fits all solution. I wish it was, I would just give you the answer, you know, and we could be, you know, there it is, put in the chat, we're all done. Um, but it's really a personal exploration and today we'll be reflecting on many dimensions of wellness, stress, burnout, and hope you find parts of it that resonate for you uh, and get some new ideas shared in this presentation or new ideas shared by your fellow VISTA members. So people often think about wellness just in terms of their physical health, you know, their nutrition, level of exercise, those kind of things. But wellness encompasses much more than that. On the screen are six dimensions of wellness, and this comes from a widely accepted model for wellness in the medical community. Each of these components, occupational, social, intellectual, spiritual, emotional, play an important role in a person's overall well being and are all connected to our Vista service experience. So, we're going to examine each of these now, and your job is to see which of these dimensions, what, what, what each of these dimensions have to tell you as a reflective process. Where do you feel like you're meeting your needs? Which area or areas need more attention? Are these dimensions evenly weighted for you or are some more important than others? We'll come back to some of those questions later, but I wanted to set the stage as we move forward to the next slide. At first glance, uh, VISTA may appear to only impact one of these dimensions, occupational, which refers to finding satisfaction and enrichment through work or full-time service experience. So with regards to this dimension, how are some, here are some questions you might consider. How are things with my supervisor? Am I getting the support I need in my position? Can you see how your service connects to the mission and purpose of the organization? This often helps us stay reconnected. 
Am I getting and taking wellness days, you know, your personal days, vacation days, sick days as appropriate? In one VISTA program that I worked with, members were able to pool some of their personal wellness days together to help a colleague who was a single mother with young children who needed more sick days to take care of her kids. That was a great solution they found to help support the wellness of one of their fellow team members. Another VISTA member I work with in Washington State spent some additional time sitting down with her supervisor and developing a more regular check-in system, which reduced her work stress immensely. The supervisor just wasn't aware of what she really needed in terms of support to be successful until the member was able to articulate it to her. So physical wellness refers to taking care of your body. And what we know is there are immense benefits to paying attention to this dimension, not just for our body. There's also positive impacts on our emotional well-being. Later in the session, we'll share with each other some of our regular physical practices and how we can deepen the impact of those things. I practice Tai Chi, which is an ancient Chinese martial art, but is internally based and more like a slow moving meditation or dance. And this practice is about being grounded and balanced and helps me deal with the stressors of life and impacts how I respond rather than react to challenges. Sometimes we think we need to have a dedicated hour and a half for a yoga class or a workout, but even doing seven minutes of highly intense activity or a few minutes of desk yoga can help us get refreshed and recharged. I personally forget this all the time, but when I do remember, I'll take a couple minute break from work, go outside to get some fresh air or do some stretching, and it really changes my attitude and mood. Yesterday, Stephen was just asking me about a project I did yesterday with a team of AmeriCorps members out in the mountains, and I was with 40 AmeriCorps members doing a day-long leadership workshop. And we were talking about team energizers that they can use at the, with their teams. And we discovered some of the team did not know the game tag. And of course, this was shocking to me as a this was a childhood rite of passage that I grew up. And so we immediately all went outside um, in this outdoor setting and played 10 minutes of everybody's it tag, elbow tag, amoeba tag. And if you're not sure what those are, I can tell you later. Um, but it was so much fun. Everybody had a blast and it really energized the rest of the afternoon. And that was all from a, just a 10 minute break of fun. And one last point here, many AmeriCorps members I've worked with have been able to get discounted yoga classes or gym memberships with the YMCA as a couple of examples. If you explain your VISTA service to folks, you'd be surprised how many different places will offer free or discounted classes or even work trade opportunities. So now we come to the social um, part of the dimension of wellness, and that refers to maintaining healthy relationships with others in your community. And many VISTA members view their service as a way to connect with their community and build these social connections. But some assistance establishing these connections in the beginning can be helpful. Often finding a mentor or cultural guide can help. It could be someone at your placement site or a partnering organization or a community member. Many members have found also that reaching out and connecting with other VISTAs or state and national AmeriCorps members who serve in the same region can help provide a supportive community of people who know what you're going through in a year of service. Members in past programs I've worked with would frequently gather for potlucks, going hiking, supporting each other on service projects like meeting at a local garden for a day of cleanup or gardening projects. For many, this type of meaningful connection with fellow service members was critical for them in their year of service. Intellectual wellness refers to a need for creating, stimulating, and engaging mental activities. Professional development during the VISTA year and having opportunities to creatively solve problems during service are the ways that VISTA service impacts intellectual wellness. It can be really helpful to have a personal development plan that you share with your supervisor stating goals you have for the year and checking in on these things periodically. What other things do you like to do to stimulate your intellectual wellness? Well, members I worked with at the Northwest Service Academy, which was in Washington State at the base of Mount Adams, uh, they started book clubs and they hosted game nights and held open mic nights, sharing poetry and music. And another program started coffee chai chats over lunch to deepen learning about the social impact, social issues impacting their clients and program. They rotated the facilitation of each of the weekly chats and the facilitator picked an article or TED talk to explore and then discuss together. 
Spiritual wellness refers to our search for meaning and purpose in life. And some of you may view your service as a way to live out your values and demonstrate life's purpose. Sometimes we can feel disconnected from the bigger mission of an organization. And that's something that can feed our deep connections and convictions. Understanding how your service helps meet or work toward the larger mission can help us feel more connected and inspired in the service that we're doing. Also, knowing what rituals and practices you have on your own and practicing regularly is important. I know for me, this is the easiest area not to attend to, but often seems the most important and how it interconnects with all the other areas of wellness for me. I've recently committed to a few weeks of few weekly practices, uh, meditation and Tai Chi, and it's had a big impact. Though, of course, I still struggle to fit in all the time and, you know, have it and do it daily. And it feels easy to make excuses for why I can't seem to find five minutes uh, to even do a short practice. Uh, one meditation teacher I knew uh, said that the biggest step was just getting yourself onto the cushion. Anything after that was a bonus. Finally, emotional wellness refers to the acceptance of one's feelings. It's not uncommon for VISTA members to encounter challenges with this dimension that could potentially lead to burnout. Knowing who your support network is is essential in service. Is it your family, old friends, or new VISTA colleagues? The National Service has a very common trajectory to the year, and it's quite common for members to experience emotional challenges at different points. Perhaps the honeymoon period wears off. Um, you find out that making change in organizations can be slow and challenging. Uh, maybe your supervisor isn't as supportive as you would like. And sometimes these dips can connect with seasonal changes. Uh, the group of members I was with yesterday uh, said they experienced challenges after about three months when the days were getting shorter, the weather had become more cold and raining. And they said paying attention to the other wellness dimensions can help us be balanced emotionally. They also suggested trying to add fun into the workplace with singing games like competition. And of course, this group, it was tag. You, doing tag was our, our focus. Um, and one more story. Uh, my colleague and I were helping a team that was having some rough times and things were emotionally taxing for them. And my colleague wanted to try something she had watched on line, laughter yoga. Uh, I looked into it and I was at first against it. It seemed outrageous. And that's the, no one is going to go for this, uh, but they loved it. Um, and so you can imagine if you look it up later, uh, you can imagine a group of members zooming around the room, imagining that they are laughing lawnmowers. It was uh, pretty funny stuff. Uh, and what we found is laughing and smiling really can impact your mood. Now, it didn't fix everything with the team dynamics immediately, but it sure helped set a new foundation. You can see as we went through each of these dimensions that they're interconnected. It's important to note that personal well being can suffer when any one dimension is threatened. After hearing a little about each of these dimensions, uh, some questions to ask yourself Are you feeling balanced in all these dimensions? How much weight of importance is each dimension for you? Where do you need to put more attention? And by the way, I love that there's so much coming into the chat. I'm really, I'm really excited to look back at it. Of course, while I'm sharing, it's hard for me to moderate that. And so I will look later when uh, Stephen takes over some aspects of the uh, webinar, I'll look back to the chat and respond there in a little while. So when the dimensions of wellness are not attended to, it can have a big impact on us and our service. And we all face daily stressors that, if not successfully managed, can build up and magnify, potentially leading to burnout. Now, burnout, of course, is a deeper level of challenge than the small stressors, and our goal is always prevention. And luckily, most preventative strategies can also help us move through burnout, too. Obviously, we're going to be our best at service if we are grounded and balanced and can manage our stress effectively. You know, tackling issues of poverty and working in community and making organizational change is a difficult task. The members have found that paying attention to the smaller signs can help them take action earlier, sooner, before things potentially become overwhelming. The first step to being able to address stress and burnout is to be able to identify the signs of it. So signs and signals can show up for all of us in unique ways and learning from others can help us gain insight into ourselves. So examples are, you know, headaches or uh, maybe not eating or not sleeping. 
the more awareness we have, the easier it becomes to notice challenges before they become too big. It may seem like very personal information, but members I've worked with in the past have gotten a lot from sharing these things with each other. People can resonate um, with each other. It also can get good reminders of things that they, um, that, that signs and signals that stand out for them or hear new things that can be helpful that they might wanna pay attention to in their life. And I've yet to meet anyone who's not dealt with stress or burnout in their life. So sharing can be very useful. Uh, for me, I notice tension in my shoulders, that I'm breathing shallowly and shallowly in the upper part of my chest. And I can get frustrated and impatient with little things that normally would not bother me. So we're going to now ask you all to share what are some of your signs of stress or being out of balance? What are those things? And Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, before we go to this question, I, I just second what you just said about the chat. Uh, just some amazing uh, ideas here. I'm sure we'll have a lot of uh, more chat things coming in, but just love to be part of this community and so proud of, of Vistas everywhere, of sharing uh, everything from how to get your service letter to uh, getting a discount at the YMCA, helping with internet access, um, this is just a wonderful thing, and I want you to know that we will continue this conversation going. Uh, we'll have a jam board at the end of this webinar. Vista Connect is always available, too. So excited to keep it going, but I see folks are getting ahead of us already here. Uh, would love you to share in the chat if you've not already. Uh, please take a moment and just share what are some signs of stress or noticing when you're out of balance. Uh, as Jeff's mentioned, this is our first step, right? To understand where we're going wrong and how we can find some solutions. And so, uh, Jeff, I'm curious what you're seeing in the chat. It looks like some really great responses here. I appreciate everybody sharing. Yeah, thanks, Stephen, for getting us set up for this. And yeah, I'm seeing a lot of things related to signs and signals in your body, you know, some of the stressors, um, some noticing some behavioral things like irritability, um, lack of motivation, lack of interest in things that you even like, um, like art, exercise, reading. Thanks, Lucas, there for that. Uh, get really crabby, okay, out of balance, cranky, apathy. Yeah, headaches, lack of sleep. Sleep is a big one that shows up for different people. Some people can't sleep. Some people are sleeping too much. Um, yeah, this is, thank you so much for sharing. Again, I know lower back pain, lack of focus, higher heart rate and anxiety. Again, I just want to really thank you for sharing real stuff with each other because I think it helps us gain awareness of our own um, process. When we hear other people reflect, it often deepens our own reflection. It might give us some signs or signals that we hadn't really thought of in our own life um, or also what to pay attention to in our colleagues and other people that we know care about so we can help spot these challenges and maybe provide support for others, not only for ourselves. And I think you know sharing these symptoms is, is very personal and I really thank you for just being really upfront with them. And we'll come back to this. Obviously you have a lot of experience being you know with signs of stress. So go team AmeriCorps there. So you know, you know we're just kidding. We all have these things. And um, that's I think what's helpful about sharing them with each other. And now let's try to think about you know, what we can do about it. We're going to start to look at how burnout and stress can be managed through self-awareness, self-care, and resiliency to mitigate stress in our VISTA service. So this image that you're seeing on the screen reminds me of a poster that I saw for a yoga retreat. It had an old man with long flowing white hair and a long white beard. He was a yogi. And he was mostly naked except for a loincloth, and he was standing in tree pose. I'm not sure if you know this pose, but it's with your hands at your heart or above your head, and you're balanced on one leg. It was a real image, but he was photoshopped onto a surfboard. So he was balanced on one leg on the surfboard, and the waves were crashing all around him. And the caption read, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. And I think this really relates to wellness, resiliency, and our year of service. We can't control the ocean of our life or workplace or even our service experience. Sometimes it's calm and peaceful, and sometimes it has crashing waves. So what are your tools to ride the waves? And next, we're going to start sharing our own tools and look at ways that we can deepen them. So self-awareness and self-care are essential components to preventing burnout. These are often easy to say and more difficult to do. We're going to share about practices we have with each other 
Um, and then I'm going to share some research that might help us deepen those practices. As we mentioned before, there's not one right way to go about deepening self-awareness or doing self-care, but here's some broad tips. Um, you know, so setting good boundaries, embracing your total self, like really being open to your strengths and your vulnerabilities, exercise and play regularly, and know what nourishes you. And we're going to spend some more time in particular um, exploring something that can really deepen our awareness and help us reconnect and ground and center us, providing needed balance in our all too often stressful world. Uh, as we did a little while ago, we're now going to share some more in the chat. And this time I want to share about our practices that help us, uh, you know, deal with the stress and anxiety and the challenges you already just listed. You know, so what are some of your practices that help us? Um, and again, learning from each other, we might hear or see other people's tools, strategies, activities that can really help us um, and give us new ideas or remind us of something we've kind of forgotten that we want to get back to. Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, as, as you just mentioned, would love you to share in the chat, what are some things you do to stay grounded? Uh, we're going to try to give you some more tools today, but I uh, want you to share what you have right now. Appreciate folks who've already been doing this. We'll also just give you a few moments just to, to share and also to scroll through the chat, just if there's some ideas that, that help you. So uh, we're going to pause just for a moment. Uh, some really great ideas here in our Vista community. I think our solutions are going to come from each other, uh, not from just one source. So uh, going to take a moment as well just to, to read through this. And Jeff, I'll, I'll turn it back to you whenever you're ready to, to talk through some of these. Thank you. Wow. I mean, I see everything from you know exercise to prayer, meditation, walking, time out in nature. So important. There's been a ton of research, which we're really not going to dive in today about how important time in nature um, really is. And it doesn't have to be going to a wilderness area. It could be going for a walk in your neighborhood or a local park, um, any of those things, just being outside. I see cooking, out time, outdoors, small meditations during break time, gardening. Wow, what a rich uh, list of activities here. I hope people are scrolling through and taking note of all these things. Even video games got a mention there. Thanks. Is that Silas? Okay, right on. <laughs> and uh, uh, let's see what else we see. Wow, it's going so fast. I can barely keep up, Stephen. It's just awesome. I love tea. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I was just drinking some a minute ago. So that's perfect. I'm with you on that. Okay, so I think the important part here is that there's not a one size fits all approach to being grounded and centered and taking care of ourselves and helping ourselves have a foundation. So we're less likely to get stressed out or have anxiety as someone mentioned, um, but things that will help us recharge, rejuvenate. And I want to stress that everything I'm going to share is to deepen your own practices and maybe you'll try some new things too, um, but there's always ways to deepen our practices. And that's what I'm going to come to now and explain a little bit more. And I, I'm going to come back and look at all the rest of the chat in a little while. That's awesome. So it turns out that research shows that doing regular activities that work for you, like you've been mentioning in the chat, is very important. So keep doing them. Uh, try new ones. Maybe you're getting some new ideas uh, today in the in the chat. Um, and you're adding to your tools to ride the waves. You need, you need many different things in your toolkit. And you can also maximize the impact of many activities by bringing mindfulness to them. Well, what is mindfulness, you might be asking. And very simply, mindfulness is bringing a non-judgmental awareness to the present moment. As a member told me this week, we are often future tripping, as he called it, or worrying about something that's happened in the past and not really living in the present. Now, he did not mean that we should not make plans or reflect on the past. Those are both good things to do. But he was identifying how we are often just sp spinning daily stories of anxiety or fear, which just adds to our stress. So mindfulness can play an important role in self-awareness, self-care, and wellness. And being in the present moment has many benefits. It can help us bring awareness to what's happening in our body and the world around us, often helping us respond versus react to situations. Just watch how often you or people around you are reacting to situations rather than bringing forward a more grounded response to the to challenges they're facing. So the research on mindfulness is deep, and we won't have time to go into it today, but simple Google 
searches will show you that for the last 20 years, there's been an immense amount of research about mindfulness. And you can see some basic like overarching headings here in the slide, you know, cognitive and academic performance improvement, physical health and psychological well-being, uh, helping develop our whole person. And these benefits connect with almost every aspect, probably every aspect of the six dimensions of wellness that we looked at earlier. So you can do any practice that you already shared in the chat. We'll go back to the same slide for a minute. Um, you can do any practice that's shared in the um, that you shared in your chat with each other with mindfulness. But sometimes it helps to uh, deepen our practice by having some, you know, some tools to help us. And I'll we'll come to those in a little bit. But I want to share um, an example of a morning walk that I took with my dog Chaco. I walk in a nearby park filled with old growth trees and winding trails. How how awesome is that? And about halfway through the walk. I realized it was not really present for the walk. You know, my body was walking, but my mind was constricted with stress and anxiety about some upcoming projects. And I was missing what was happening all around me. And once I realized this, I was able to reconnect with the present moment and, and observe what was happening. And I saw the sunlight filtering through the orange, yellow, and red big leaf maple leaves. They're the size of, your, of a hat and 120 foot high Douglas fir trees swaying lightly in the breeze and I could feel my feet on the dirt path. You get the idea. It was an entirely different walk. So bringing attention to any of your practices can deepen the positive impacts for you. Or you can be doing your practice in a real constricted way that's actually not benefiting us deeply. So the goal here is to how do we deepen those practices we already have. Slide. Sorry, my slide got stuck there for a second. Um, so for, for most of us, it helps to have a practice to develop our capacity for being in the present moment. And those practices are called contemplative practices. And they exist in diverse cultural practices from all over the world. And research from the Center for Contemplative Mind and Society, they examine nonprofit leaders, educators, and change makers from all over the world to find out what practices deepen their service. And the resulting research was distilled into this tree of practice, which is on the slide right now. And each branch of the tree being assigned different categories of practices, as well as generated a list of hundreds of practices. And you can see some of those details later. We'll share a link or it'll be in the handout packet. Um, but this reflection now is to see if we have any existing practices we'd like to deepen. Do you have any family practices that have been let go of and that you'd like to restart or new practices that we'd like to try. I'd like to make a quick note though about cultural sharing versus cultural taking. So we live in an amazing time in human history. We have access to cross-cultural practices and that's wonderful. Uh, I bet I can go in Seattle today and practice where I'm based at uh, practice hundreds of different kinds of practices, which is awesome and very unusual. You know, consider my grandpa's generation where you probably only had practices at, accessible that we're just in your immediate local community. Um, so that's awesome that we have so much cultural sharing, but I do want to share that there's been a history of cultural appropriation. So it's important for that's cultural taking from others without their permissions. So it's important if you're going to explore a practice that's not from your cultural background, it's important to know the story of how that practice is being taught to you. Like, how did it come to be? So for example, my Tai Chi is a lineage from a grand master who came to the West to share his practices with Westerners who he felt would benefit from the health and rejuvenative properties and practices of Tai Chi. It's a complex reflection, but I wanted to make note of that. So practices which ground us in the present moment help us build capacity to take that awareness out into the world and increase our resiliency to handle stress or challenges, especially that can occur in doing deep community service such as your VISTA work, fighting poverty. So I'm gonna share briefly about each of the branches of the tree, and then we're gonna give you a chance to answer a poll and kind of reflect about your own practices. So the first branch of the tree um, is activist practice. And activist practices are work and service, you know, as, as a practice. So even just doing your VISTA service is, a, you know, is an act of practice. The next practice is generative practices. So these are um, things that 
give birth to or evoke, these are like loving kindness medica- meditations or things that evoke compassion or connect you with uh, whatever you call God or the spirit or the divine. And the next one are movement practices. And these are practices that emphasize um, obviously your, your body in motion. And so this could be yoga or Tai Chi or uh, dance. The next one are relational practices. And these are practices that involve communicating with others or oneself in a reflective practice. So it, it could be, you know, journaling, it could be a dialogue circles, listening circles. And the last one is ritual or cyclical practices. And these are practices done alone or in community to help mark the passage of time or milestones in life. Um, so you get the idea here that all these practices have been um, set out in this tree of practices. And what we're curious about is, you know, how do your practices connect there? Do you have, you, do you have a contemplative practice? Is something that helps connect you to the, the present moment, uh, helps give you experience in how to do that. Um, and then we're going to ask you some questions about what kind you have. So I think Stephen's going to take it away on the next slide. Yeah, Jeff, thank you so much for, for sharing all this. Uh, at the start of my AmeriCorps service, this would have been really new for me. And so I want to respect folks uh, who, like me, who might be learning about this for the first time today, also would love to hear from folks who are doing this work. Um, share a link in the chat to the tree that Jeff just mentioned. We're going to launch a poll. There's two questions on it. The first question is uh, whether you have a practice that you use to stay centered, to stay sustainable in your VISTA service. Uh, totally okay to say, no, I would like to. Um, and second is, is if you do have that practice or if you'd like to, to create one, what would it be about? What branch of the tree? And again, I shared in the chat the link if you're looking to see that tree again. You heard Jeff just describe it really well. Um, I see folks are responding here. We'll give folks just another moment. Um, I see no, but I'd rather take a nap. Does that count as being a pretty popular one? <laughs> um, I, I second that. I know days are getting shorter. We're getting towards Thanksgiving and the holidays. I get it. Um, but this is really cool. I appreciate folks participating here and um, sharing what uh, works for you on the site. It looks like a pretty good distribution. We'll give folks another couple of seconds um, and then we can share these results so that uh, everybody can take a look here um, at, at the results. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate you setting up the poll here. And yes, thanks for, uh, you know, uh, handling my attempt at a joke on the second one about napping, you know, so, but I, I'm with you on that. <laughs> a, good. a good nap can go a, good, a long way for wellness. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's got like 12, 13% now. So we're, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the trick. We should build in some more nap time. Um, yeah. Thanks for this. I'm seeing people having quite a spread here of the kind of practices they either have or would be interested in having with a lot of people in stillness practices and quieting the mind movement practices also a lot of creation practices. So we're getting a spread across everything and it's just really nice. And if, feel free if you want to write in the chat what your specific practice is or when you're interested in, if you want to keep that, you obviously already have some really good dialogue going with each other in the chat. So feel free to add in over there as you'd like to. What do you think, Stephen? Should we stop sharing the poll or should we keep Yeah, yeah, going? we keep moving. Thanks everyone for responding. Awesome, thank you. So I like to have you join me um, in a practice for just a couple of minutes of simple breath awareness. This picture on the screen is a place um, that's not too far from me, a few hours from where I live in a probably like a good long hike, a six mile hike in. This is the Goat Rocks Wilderness. And so this is a an image that kind of brings me to some calmness and stillness. And I want to just do that with you all if you're willing to. And I'm not um, suggesting any kind of religious practice here, but simply bringing your attention to your breath, which is happening all day, whether or not you're aware of it. Um, And if you have a specific other practice you'd like to engage in for the next two minutes um, after I get done talking, we have two minutes of practice and that's fine too, okay? this, This is about not needing to adopt my practices, but it's about how to deepen your own practice. I see someone saying, where is this wilderness? That's a Goat Rocks wilderness, and it's in the South Cascades of Washington State. Um, Send you some directions later. Okay, so make yourself comfortable in a chair or on the ground, and it helps to have your spine straight. Begin to relax your shoulders. And remember, if you have your own practice you'd like to do right now, that's fine. It's about deepening what works for you. Your hands can rest comfortably in your lap. 
Your eyes can close or just soften. And let your breath be natural. There's no need to control it. So bring your awareness to the tip of your nose and see if you can feel the breath going lightly on the inhale or exhale. And just keep your attention on that sensation. If you don't feel anything there, you can put your hand on your belly and feel the breath rising and lowering it. But either way, you're going to keep your attention on sensation that's connected to the breath. And let any thoughts or distractions float by like clouds in the sky. If you find ever that you get caught up in thinking, uh, making to-do lists in your head or wondering about dinner, just gently bring your awareness again to the sensation of breathing. So I'll be quiet now and we'll practice just for a short time and I'll let you know when to stop. And again, practice your focusing on your breath, gentle compassion. So start to bring your awareness back into whatever room you're in and try and keep that energy of connection to your breath and stillness maybe you found in the, that was 20 minutes that we were practicing for, no, I'm just teasing, that was just two minutes. Um, and I think it's important to realize that sometimes it only takes a few minutes to kind of reset. Uh, and so that's uh, helpful just to take a few minutes of silence when you get a moment to do that or whatever your practices are. Um, and a couple notes, and feel free to, if you would like to write in the chat about how that was for you or any reflections you have, feel free. And I'll take a look at it in a little while. Um, but I want to note that sometimes our minds are very quiet, you know, like the calm motion, and other times they can be very active, like the crashing waves. And it's okay, whatever happened. The point is to keep coming back to the breathing. And that's actually the gap of space that helps us build resilience. So it's all about practice. We don't start out surfing on a big wave. We start out with smaller ones. And my Tai Chi teacher used to say that the most important step in the form was the one you took after you finished, meaning how you bring the practice to everyday life in your Vista service is an essential question. Whatever your practice is, not my practices, but yours, how do you capture that specialness and connection of the practice and bring it into every aspect of your life. And that's a lifetime journey. So be gentle with yourself. Um, and again, our goal here, just to reiterate, is not to say that you have to do a certain practice on the list of the or the tree of practice, um, but really to ask yourself, how can you deepen your current practices? In my session yesterday with members, one mentioned she liked to clean her house to help with stress. And we actually discussed how she could be really present while doing that and not just being stressed out while she was cleaning the house, but taking in every sensation, for example, of washing the dishes, uh, rather than worrying about all the other things going on in her life while she's washing the dishes. And you see the distinction is something you can apply to any activity that you're engaged in. Slide. 
So to recap what we've been exploring, all the self-care, self-awareness, and mindfulness that we've been discussing is building up our resilience. And just going through life builds resiliency, but we can also specifically work to deepen our capacity to deal with challenges, stress, change, et cetera. And resiliency, just to clarify really clearly, is the ability to respond or adapt positively to a difficult and challenging event or experience. It's often described as the ability to bounce back after something difficult has happened. So it's important to cultivate resources for building resiliency. And the work that we just did, um, exploring and sharing with each other and doing a short practice is one important way to do that. And later, we'll share some additional resources with you. So the reflection we've been doing today is an important part of helping to build wellness, but it's not going to manifest unless we actually do something. So having an action plan is essential to putting our new ideas into practice. Uh, just as in your service experience, making an action plan being essential to making organizational projects happen, uh, so too we can use this tool to take action on our own wellness. There are many different ways to organize your thinking in an action plan. This slide shares one way, but you may have others. Here, this, this system defines our stressor first. So we, of course, need self-awareness to even know something's a stressor, which is why we shared examples of our signs of stress earlier. Uh, then we need to evaluate what is actually happening and why. Then determine an effective strategy for addressing the challenge, which here is the positive coping mechanism. And then we hopefully find some relief. And one item that's not listed on this slide, but I think can be helpful in an action plan is to acknowledge any barriers or obstacles that might make it hard to enact your strategy. For example, a barrier could be the amount of time you actually have each week to implement an exercise program. I wanna share just one brief example of an action plan for the member I mentioned earlier. So she was noticing signs of daily stress in her life. She had headaches and wasn't sleeping well. She spent time examining various aspects of the dimensions of wellness and felt like the most likely issue was her service placement site. Her supervisor was nice and obviously cared about the service she was doing, but they rarely met. The supervisor worked out of the office most of the time and was very busy. And the member decided she needed more, needed to address the amount of regularly scheduled check-in times with her supervisor. And she was really worried a barrier might be that the supervisor's ability to actually find the time to meet with her or that she would prioritize it. When they finally discussed the situation, they were able to find a more regular check-in support system. So that's the positive coping mechanism above. Um, and they used a combination of in-person meetings and phone call and Zoom meetings um, because of the supervisor's out-of-the-office schedule. They found a solution that was complex and worked for their needs. And after a month of this new approach, a good deal of this member's stress had dissipated. So we're going to take a few moments now for you all to use the handout to do some planning on your own action plan, your own next steps. Jeff, thank you so much for walking through all of that. I, I second folks in the chat and just feeling much more relaxed and, and just grateful for uh, this community here today. So we are gonna share a, an important link in the chat, uh, something that was at the beginning of the webinar as well, but would encourage you to click on this and to save it. Thanks so much, Misty, for posting that just now. Um, this is something y'all that may take a few extra minutes to work through. Take a moment and save this somewhere. This is gonna give you some step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on how to reflect on what Jeff has shared with us today, looking at these six dimensions of wellness, looking through what Jeff just shared of how to think through a challenge uh, and how to find a resolution, and also has some links to some great resources like the tree of contemplative practices, um, we know this is going to take a little bit of time, but there are some incredible folks on this call with great ideas. You've been sharing them in the chat already. We want to have a place that you can come back to and use for the future. So we're going to go to the next slide. We're actually going to use a little program called Jamboard. Uh, this is something that we really would encourage you to share. What are some of your goals to manage stress, to build on the resilience that you're going to put in your action plan? Completely understand this is going to take a little bit of time to reflect on and work on, but please take a moment and click on the link in the chat. We're actually going to share our screen on that Jamboard right now um, and would encourage you, if you are able, uh, and have some things to share uh, to give it to the group. Uh, what are some things that you are planning to do, some next steps, some resources? Um, so we're gonna work on sharing our screen here. Again, that, that little Jamboard link that Misty just uh, put in the chat, click on that. Um, you are gonna hit a little posted note 
on the left-hand side of the Jamboard and you can share uh, pieces of your action plan. So appreciate everybody uh, working through this with us. Excited to see the, the wonderful ideas that you have. Um, and we can take a moment here now to, to share out that Jamboard. Thanks, Stephen, for setting us up. I appreciate that and uh, moving us on to the jam board. And I was seeing also a lot of response in the chat, which I will still get back to. I know in a little bit, Stephen's going to take us into some resources and I'll have a chance to scroll back even further. But a lot of people had some great reflections about the practice. And now I'm seeing uh, people coming in with um, going on a walk after work, spending uh, classical music and tea time sharing this information with <laughs> other vistas. Awesome. Do you see something I, funny there? <laughs> I do appreciate folks' patience. Sounds like we've got too many great ideas. Maybe it's uh, it's having a little bit of issues. It's not an app. It's just kind of virtual chart paper. If we were all in a, a big meeting room, it would be great to share our ideas. So appreciate folks' patience if you want to refresh and try again in a, a second. But seeing some really cool things, I'll let, I'll let Jeff shout them out. But I appreciate all of your, your grace here for uh, our virtual world that we live in. But I know I'm excited to come back and look at this and to uh, continue sharing this with, with VISTA members. We will I'll be sure to share this link out again in the future as well. Um, so thanks for creating a, an amazing resource for folks that, that can keep growing and evolving. Awesome. I see a lot of great responses, people figuring out ways to build things into their daily uh, routine. And I love that someone's going to share this with other members um, on their team, which is awesome. Doing our this work of wellness and community makes a lot of sense. And Stephen, am I understanding this right? This Jamboard link will be up for a while so people can kind of look at this even after yeah. the webinar is over. Is that correct? Yeah, there's there's no rush here, y'all. We just want this to be a, a living resource. Again, Jeff is a phenomenal expert in this field, but uh, the, the solutions to the big challenges that we're all facing are going to come from our community and from each other, right? They're, they're not going to come from one headquarters or one resource. It's going to come from problem solving as, as a group. So we're excited to be able to uh, continue to grow this and continue to providing programming like this to support you uh, in the weeks and months to come. Thanks. And I encourage you to go back to that handout, like Stephen said, later and uh, really work through uh, some action plan, do some reflective thinking, either on your own or find a friend to uh, do it with. That's also a good way to kind of think through challenges we're experiencing and come up with some positive solutions. Awesome. One more quick note, y'all, if, if in any way the Jamboard is causing challenges, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, please feel free to just reflect uh, and use the, the worksheet that we shared too, if that's just helpful that you'd like to use for yourself. We can go back to the slides here now, but um, appreciate all of you participating and trying out a new resource. I hope it's something you might be able to use uh, with your, your service site as well. We have one more fun poll here just to reflect on what we've learned today. I want to give you a scenario. Um, so I want to tell you about a VISTA member who's fictional named Kevin. Uh, they started service this last summer. They're enjoying their service so far, but have been struggling to balance their service responsibilities with a long commute. I saw a couple of folks in the chat with this too. And responsibilities to take care of family members. A lot of friends have done AmeriCorps in a similar boat. So the, the question for you to just check what we've learned is what's a practice Kevin could adopt to improve their wellness and resiliency? Um, launching that poll now. Jamboard is still up. You can still use it if you'd like to have that in another tab or bookmark it, but just a little poll to check our knowledge here today uh, as we move into the, the Q&A and wrapping us up. Uh, I see folks are answering. Thank you so much. Um, give folks just another moment. Some different options Kevin might be able to, to try. Just want to make sure that, you know, maybe if there's a, if this is your situation, if there's someone at your site in this situation too, might be able to help coach them and take care of others. I really like what Jeff shared earlier, right? It's about taking care of ourselves so that we can look after our community. Um, I appreciate folks participating and responding. Give folks just another moment and we can end this poll and we can share our answer. Looks like we did a really, really excellent job um, that Kevin uh, should, should take a moment to reflect, right? On his, their, on his stress, uh, create a solution, evaluate those challenges and implement some positive coping practices, right? We don't want him skipping breaks. Uh, don't want necessarily striving for perfection, right? We can't do it all. We can all do our part. Uh, and we know that we can't keep it just to ourselves. So finding a support structure to, to make sure that we have what we need. Um, thank you all so much for, for participating here. We can keep moving. Um, I wanna take a moment here 
um, and just share a couple of resources that VISTA members can use to get help. The resources on the screen are also available in the handout that you pulled up uh, earlier today. You can look at it, the link in the chat. We'll also uh, put it alongside the recording on the VISTA campus. We'll send it out via email as well. And we'd like to leave you with a specific recommendation for further study. It's on that handout. This resource is called the Work and Wellbeing Initiative. It's a collaboration between Harvard and MIT to develop evidence-based workplace challenges that will foster worker well-being. Um, and this really looks at the workplace environment. It shows that its elements have a really big impact on our wellness from your supervision, to the workplace setting, communication style, and more. We really hope this toolkit gives you some steps to support you and your wellness. So take a look at that in the handout if it's interesting to you. Um, just to summarize what we've done here today, Jeff shared a bunch of amazing resources. Um, we've looked at how Vista Service can impact multiple levels of your wellness. We've looked at some coping strategies. We've done some of them today. I really appreciate the, the breathing exercise. Uh, we've identified some resources and created an, the start of an action plan uh, to help manage uh, challenges in your Vista service. Before we wrap up and get to that q and I mentioned this before, but we will post the recording of this webinar on the Vista campus. You can go to learn.americorps.gov and log in. And once you're logged in, you can click on the catalog. You'll see a red square on the slide. That'll bring you to the learning paths available. We're all VISTA members on this call. Uh, you can filter by members. You can see a lot of other great uh, webinars recorded as well. You can also get to the appropriate learning path that you're looking for. Um, if this is your first time uh, joining the campus, you will need to enroll and join. Just a couple of clicks, you'll browse the available recorded webinars at your leisure. Uh, and again, this will be posted in the next couple of days under the My Professional Development Learning Path. Um, before we do a couple of quick questions, we would love to get your feedback on this call. Please take a moment, look at the chat. Uh, we will post a SurveyMonkey link here. We're constantly reviewing the content of our webinars. We want to make it better and as relevant as possible for you as VISTA members who are doing incredible work in our communities. So please take a moment to complete a brief survey. We really do appreciate you sharing your feedback. Thank you all so, so much. We are going to have a couple of minutes here before the top of the hour. I want to let Jeff uh, share some, some uh, notes for us because it's a really informative presentation. I got a couple of really good questions and comments uh, in the Q&A. Please feel free to use that Q&A option. We will stick around for a little bit and answer some in writing as well. Um, one thing I, I did notice, uh, something someone share, is that uh, a lot of us on our phones have a personal focus mode. I believe that's what it's called on an iPhone. Uh, other phones may have this too. What I've found, what this member shared and what I've found as well is it can help filter out texts, calls, notifications after hours. Jeff, do you want to share just a little bit of ways to kind of stay focused and keep the all these work challenges and notifications, uh, you know, condensed to the workday and not going into other parts of our life? Any any recommendations you have on that? Yeah, well, such an important question, especially with the you know technology has made us accessible for every minute and the. And a lot of times the dynamics in workplaces, especially nonprofits where people are stretched, you know, thin is just kind of like you're always working, always accessible. And I mean, I think it's important to connect in with your supervisor. And I think setting boundaries is really essential and letting them know, you know, you're you're going to work really hard when you're working, but you also need to have time where you're you're off and get to recharge and reconnect. And so um, setting that kind of tone is really important. And so. Um, yeah, I think what was mentioned, you know, setting different settings on your personal devices, remembering to put it away. Um, you could have an outgoing message saying, I'm, you know, I'm out of the office until tomorrow morning and I will respond as soon as I am able or, you know, things like that can be really helpful. There are lots and lots of apps if you're looking for ways to kind of stay connected during the day and kind of reminding yourself to be mindful and aware. You can just do search for apps related to mindfulness practices and the whole messes of them will come up. I also put a link in the chat. Someone asked in one of the Q&A sessions about additional wellness resources. I didn't get to label it, but I just put it in the chat a little bit ago. It's a link to a Google document that a team of members who are doing an extended wellness series with me and some colleagues um, in Washington State uh, came up with a resource harvest of all kinds of different care um, resources. So I just threw that in the chat. It's just an open document. Anybody can take a look at it anytime. So there might be some good websites and resources in there for you. 
Jeff, thank you so much. I have one more Tai Chi question yes. for you, yes. but I, yes. I really quickly want to share one thing. I noticed <laughs> a number of folks asking, how do I get access to whether it's government benefits or maybe discounts in my community? I want to make sure folks are aware they can log into their my.americorps account and print out a service letter. Um, that is something that you can use uh, to make sure that you have access to benefits. And also, as Jeff mentioned, maybe go to your local YMCA and get a discount, uh, see what happens. There's also uh, a link to the AmeriCorps benefits just in general. If you'd like to look at an overview uh, that we offer, would encourage you just to keep that for reference. But uh, a fun question, just to wrap up, Jeff, uh, from Marcus, thanks for the question. How did you discover Tai Chi in your journey? And just any final mm. thoughts for us today? Yeah, thanks for that. So I went to... Uh a graduate school in Colorado, a small kind of unusual school called Naropa University. And it was founded by a Tibetan Buddhist monk who wanted to kind of take away a lot of the religious practices of Buddhism, but stick to the kind of heart of it as an educator. And uh, that was many, many years ago. Now the school is, you know, not just a Buddhist university, but it's open to anybody of any tradition. Um, but their mindfulness practices were woven into the curriculum in almost every class. And I had the amazing opportunity to take Tai Chi classes from a really awesome teacher. And that's where I first learned and I have practiced ever since. And um, I have some friends in Seattle who I've been practicing with for a long time. Uh, there's lots of different uh, Tai Chi out there in the world. And so if you're interested, you can always shoot me an email. I put my email in the Q&A. Um, list there, and I'd be happy to share resources with you later. Um, and anything else I'd like to share, I just want to thank people for the authenticity and like really just showing up and being present in the webinar. I know people are really busy and we can be zoomed out in this world. And so I'm seeing a lot of, um, you know, such great sharing back and forth and sharing resources and personal experiences. So, uh, thanks so much for that. We made it, made it a quite, uh, lovely, uh, hour long session for me, even considering it's in the virtual space, right? And I wish I could, you know, gather you all in my backyard right now, but maybe someday. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, such a great thought. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I totally agree. Some incredible resources in the chat here. And again, feel so lucky to be part of this community. Just to wrap us up here today, uh, we'll share one more time a link to Vista Connect. This is a place where we can keep the conversation going. We will have the Jamboard link open too, but if you've got good wellness ideas, if you've got advice for folks, uh, ways to help each other out, please would encourage you to share. Um, I do want to thank you all so much for being part of this webinar. We will be back next month in December. Uh, it'll be on December 14th. We will talk all about grants and aligning your funding search with your Vista project. Grant writers out there, folks doing that work, uh, please join us. Tell your friends, tell fellow VISTA members. You can find that information and you can register for it on the VISTA campus. Click on calendar. You'll see a blue or green dot that shows the event. You click on December 14th and you will see us there. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today, for being an AmeriCorps VISTA member. Thank you for your service, your participation. We wish you all the success in the world. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a wonderful and restful uh, couple of days off next week. This concludes today's webinar and hope you all will continue to take these uh, wellness and resiliency practices moving forward. Thank you all so much for joining.